you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, welcome to Relax. Hi. You probably have no idea who this is. Who is this stranger? Oh, my, hello, stranger. My voice sounds so weird. You actually probably are thinking, oh, is the sound cutting out? Because my voice goes in and out. This is Colleen Ballinger. It is, in fact, not an imposter. This is the real Colleen Ballinger. Uh, uh, I can attest to that. Uh, yeah, you're right in front of me. I see you. You are I am. Colleen and you Ballinger. Are? I'm Eric Stockland. You did it. You introduced yourself. Um, I obviously lost my voice. I had shows this weekend in Memphis and Tennessee and Nashville and Tennessee. And the shows are great. The audiences were lovely, but my voice, I loved it in Memphis, guys. Okay. That's where it is now. I feel like my there. relax should, this week should be your voice. Like you should relax your voice. I really should. That Because I'm worried about your little <clears throat> cords and your little I know me too. throaties. So guys, guess what? That means this week's episode is just Eric. And we'll I'm, see. I'm just I can I can try and and talk most of the time, but I feel like uh, you'll put up a fight. Well, I feel like voice or no like, voice, you're still going to try and say some words. Well, because I was on tour trying to save my voice, we couldn't talk on the phone. I was trying to stay on vocal rest, so we did not talk really at all the last yeah. few days. And so I've been, and then I got home, and when you have a four year old and one year old twins, they don't let you have a conversation. No. So like we literally, I've been at home. We since haven't talked like in one. five days. And I, I literally haven't spoken to you. It's no. now like nine thirty, ten at night. Texts, you know. So um, you sent me lots of lots of TikToks. I'm really happy that we're doing the podcast now because I like get to me talk too. to you. Me too. Yeah. So I know I shouldn't be talking, but like I'm excited. So, um, we have a fun episode. Flynn was desperate to do a truck of the day. I I stumbled upon a truck of the day. I was with the babies, then I saw you guys he in begged. here, and I was like, "You're." <clears throat> Not only do we have a truck of the day, we he have, stole my job. We have two truck of the days. What? And we have so much to talk about. At one point he ran in, he grabbed a snack. He goes, hi, Dada. He grabbed a snack and then ran back in here. And he said, oh, just grabbing a snack of the day. Is there yeah. a snack of the day too? There's a lot happening. Okay. You'll, you'll, you'll hear it in a little bit. But I first, love it. Um, first, love you. Who needs to relax today? Well, like I said, I feel like you're, you're, <laughs> you should be on vocal rest, your voice. Uh, as you pop a Ricola. Yes. Those work for you? No. But I, I don't just, think they're trying to put in. It's just like a candy, right? Does it? Does Ricola do anything for anybody? I don't know. Um, I was going to talk about the idea of coincidence. Okay. I don't. I coincidence makes me uncomfortable. So, do you think it's like a spiritual like experience? Like, what do you think it is? I, that might not spirit. Maybe spiritual is not the right word, but I I feel uncomfortable when like extreme coincidences happen. Why? Like, because if I it's just a coincidence, then it shouldn't make you uncomfortable. Like a coincidence would be something that's like, oh, what a coincidence, whatever. I know, but, but some, like if it's like. But when it's really strange and I want to give you an example, since I haven't okay, got to talk okay, okay, to okay. you, I took our son. I'm, I don't want to dox this person, so I'm not going to say where in case they're still camping there. But I, I took our son um, spontaneously. I had to go pick up a chicken item and then we and far away and we were driving back and we were driving past a lake. And so I was like, well, there's a lake on a map. Like, and I'm, it's just me and Flynn, like adventure time. I'm going to pull over at this lake and we're going to explore this lake and have some, you know, lake fun. Okay. Fish maybe. Another thing I'll get to later. So we pull into this like campground lake area and it is a, a sea of RVs, which is another thing I could get into is the idea of camping as I know it as a child has now become something completely different, which maybe we're a part of because we did the whole RV camping thing. Yeah, it was so fun. And it was so fun. But camping now, when you go to a campsite, there's no tents. Nobody is in a tent. Everybody is in a, a very expensive RV attached to a pickup truck or et cetera. It seems like a very expensive hobby. But in any case, it's like a, there's, it's, there's a sea of people doing, doing that. Um, and then I, and you, as you, as I'm going through this, like, you know, kind of this old campground, whatever, like, you know, it's, it is what it is. There's like a stop sign because there is like the general store of this campground. And I see this woman jogging towards me who looks kind of out of place. Cause she looks like fancy for this, for this campground. She looks okay. like, you know, a, a little out of place, like her, her attire and she's the short haircut. And, she, and I'm, as she's running towards the stop sign, jogging, exercising, I'm like coming up to the stop sign. And then all of a sudden she's like going to take a right in front of my car. And so I stop and I go, you can go ahead. And she w waves back at me and smiles. And then I'm like, oh, that's pink. It is, what? it is 
you know, Grammy winning recording artist Pink. Are you serious? Right directly in front of our. How did you not tell me this? Because we haven't talked and I was saving it for now. Uh, oh my in front God. Of our, in front of our minivan. And I go, that's, that's fucking Pink. You know, and I looked at my rearview mirror and as, as it's funny, as she ran by, she's wearing a baseball hat like down, but as she ran by, she took off the hat to like furrow her hair or, you know, whatever. And it was, it, it was I mean, it was, it absolutely was a hundred percent. And I was like, huh. And I've, I've never met her, but we've seen her before at like things. I've met her. Was she nice? Very nice. I interviewed her um, when I interviewed people for Ellen at some award show. Oh, right. Um, she's and then very we're, nice. Yeah, when we when we were at the People's Choice Awards, they were doing yeah. some like honor for her. Yeah. Uh, that year, but I was just like, huh. But I'm just with Flynn, you know what I mean. So I'm not gonna be like, yo, Flynn, that's Pink. So I'm like, Flynn has no idea who Pink is. Like, how would he, you know? He's not aware of Pink. He listens to truck songs and and watches you know, cartoon. Like he doesn't know. Like so so just it was just kind of like an internal like. That's bizarre. That was like a bizarre thing to happen at a stop sign. And this yeah. was a coincidence? Because I'm not in Los Angeles. So like, you know what I mean? If in Los Angeles, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've seen a lot yeah. of people at stop signs. <clears throat> sure. Um, but it was this, what was your question? That was a coincidence? Well, so then the next day, I'm hanging out with Flynn, just us, and he's singing to himself. And he's singing a, a song with like lyrics that I've never heard. And I, we're at the Kitchen Island, and I go, Flynn, what are you singing? And he's like, oh, it's just a song by um, uh, this person, Pink. And I go, what? He's like, oh, I'm singing this song. And, and, and he starts to tell me he's singing a song by someone named Pink. And I'm like, what is it? Like, you got to be kidding me. And so then I opened up my Spotify, and I go to, like, Pink's top hits. And the second song, like, Free Fallen or something, he's like, oh, yeah, this is the one. This is what I'm singing. It's a song I've never heard, never played for him. Someone else must have, like you or someone else. I don't, I don't know. know, but he was like he just happened to be the next day. It was you know who it, you know who's gonna freak out about this and who it probably was it was our nanny. Yeah. She loves pink. Well, yeah. Then of course, because yeah. who wouldn't? But she like really loves her. So like she probably shows it to her, but she's gonna freak out when she finds this out. Oh, well, I have to tell her. Yeah. Um, but it just it was so weird to me that like I, I, that happened. And I didn't have any mention of it at all. You know what I mean? Then me and Flynn went fishing and, and we hiked uh, and then we drove back to where we live. Uh, and then the next day, yeah, he was just singing that song and it was, and it was her, which is, which he's never sung a pink song for me. He's never, mm. he's never sung, sung any song where I'm like, what is that? You know what I mean? Like, I've, cause I'd never heard that song. Yeah. I just thought it was such a bizarre coincidence. Interesting. And the other day I was trying to leave our driveway and I saw that our neighbor was here and I, and I was in a rush and I didn't want to have a conversation with this neighbor. I was like, oh no, I got to get out of this driveway as fast as I can. And so like I see the neighbor and I see the neighbor, like I look up in the rearview mirror and I see him like kind of almost see me. And so then, so I'm like, okay, get out of here. Start to pull out of a driveway, an Amazon delivery truck kind of all of a sudden just backs somehow like completely lengthwise across the driveway from the neighbor's driveway blocking the exit. And I'm like, Oh no, I'm stuck. And they're like, they're out of their truck and making a delivery at someone else's house. And then I see the neighbor in the room walking towards the car. And then I got stuck in a conversation, but it felt exactly like in the Truman show when they're like, Oh no, we're not ready for him yet. Or we got to keep him here. Oh, right. That I was like very purposefully. I don't know if that's exactly coincidence, but like it was another moment I wanted to tell you about. I thought you were going to say he was like, oh, pink's in the and house. And it was pink. <laughs> I thought that's what you were going to say. And the Amazon delivery <laughs> driver was pink. You know, it was, it was just like another example this week of like, it felt too staged. Yeah. It felt too uh, surreal <clears throat> to be real. Yeah. I don't know, love. It's crazy. Surreal to be real. Yeah, I don't know. The title of my memoir. I uh, think coincidences are cool. It is cool. I'm not saying and it's I, not cool. I do feel like a lot but of it makes times me uncomfortable. coincidences like, I don't feel are coincidences. I feel like they're like supposed to happen that way because, right. you know, whatever you want to think or believe. But so like, what's going on with Pink? Maybe she's supposed to be in your life for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. I think that was an actual coincidence that I was singing a Pink song after you saw Pink. It was very strange because he doesn't <clears> sing. He doesn't sing pop star songs like really like he, well like, he sings Miley Cyrus quite some, a lot sometimes he'll sing yeah Party in the USA or the Flower song mm -hmm. now um, but that's it's usually a, he's talking to himself about trucks or singing about trucks you know mm -hmm. it's rare yeah that's crazy love you I, yeah 
I can't believe you, your best Saw friends with pink. pink. Waved at me. <clears throat> just waved and smiled at me. I think Flynn would love her. Eye contact and everything. Flynn would love her music. First of all, he'd love her music. But two. Well, yeah, of course. Right now, he's obsessed with the color pink. He's re- he's gone through so many different favorite colors. It was green for a while because of garbage trucks. And then it was blue for a minute. It was red for a while. And now it is pink. All pink. Like he See, now I'm freaking out because his favorite color is pink. He wanted to paint his nails pink this week. He, and I'm sitting next to a chicken that he named. Pink. Pink. This is what I'm talking about. This doesn't oh. freak you out. This isn't no. blowing your mind. No, I think our kid likes the color pink. Oh. Um, anyway. And then I saw pink at a <clears> campground. <throat> Yeah, we should say thanks to our first sponsor. It's not. Okay. It's not pink, though. Unfortunately, can you imagine if Pink cool. was just like sponsoring podcasts, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, asking us, just to, like talk about her? Anyway, no, it's actually Helix. Oh, if I could lay down right now on our Helix mattress, that sounds amazing. Oh man, guys, I am so excited to get on our Helix mattress tonight. I am so tired. Whenever I travel, I yeah. realize how much I miss. Our Helix mattress, how much I miss our bed because I don't get to sleep very much when I'm on tour. It's only like a few hours a night and um, it's always on hotel beds, which, you know, hotel beds can be great. But like, man, nothing compared to that Helix mattress. Nothing like a home mattress, like a home Helix mattress. I've slept on some horrible hotel mattresses. Yeah, so have I. Oh, my gosh. So we've had ours for over a year and it's It's been longer than it's it's been almost it's been a, been a while, but it's been great, and we love it. It's help helped our sleep so much. It's helped our backs. It's helped us just to feel more cozy. Um, and our kids love it. Our pets love it. We love it. Alex, just sometimes spiders love it. There was a spider crawling across it yesterday, what? or not yesterday, the, the day before I left for tour. A spider crawled across my leg. I don't think they would watch you saying that. I'm just saying everyone loves it, even spiders. I don't think spiders come with a mattress. Our house has a lot of spiders in it. Okay, because it seemed like you were implying there's spiders no, they're, in they're, the they mattresses. No, they don't have spiders in their mattresses. Of course they don't. Okay. I've never seen a spider on the mattress until we moved to a house with lots of spiders. Okay, coincidence? You have to, you'd have to Coincidence? Admit. Anyway, I think um, not. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even mattresses made for kids. So how do you know which Helix mattress is best for you? Well, you just take the Helix Sleep Quiz. It's super funsies. You find out your perfect mattress in just under two minutes. I actually love taking it. I thought it was fun. We found out that we are, we obviously are side sleepers. So we have the Midnight Lux, it's like butt a medium, medium firmish mattress. It's lovely. Um, it's, it's pretty wonderful and it's shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than to sleep on it in your own house. And that is why they offer a hundred night trial and a 10 to 15 year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Everyone's unique. Everyone sleeps differently. And that is why they have seven different models um, to choose from each design for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. They have models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief. If you sleep on your side, like we do models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body like a baby for essential support and stomach <laughs> and back. Sleep Who is positions. this stranger co-hosting the podcast? With me I don't know. Right? You're actually definitely, um, if you sleep, you're not supposed to sleep on your stomach if you're a baby. So don't quote me on that. I was just saying like, you but sleep I'm doing like, it now cr- as an older man. Yeah. Just to try um, it out. Plus they have enf- enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And if your spine needs some extra 10 to 11 K, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. Now you're getting it's a technical. Perfect combination of comfort and support. I didn't know you knew so much about Helix mattresses. Like, you know, the whole engineering. Yeah. Of it. it has nothing to do with me reading it, but I also just love them. Well, so sometimes much. when something is so comfortable, you want to like know about like what's going on in there. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it sounds like you've done a deep I love dive. It. Yeah. It's my passion. Um, we love it. And you guys will too. And not only is this mattress the best we've ever slept on, but the setup is really fast and easy. Um, they deliver straight to your door for free. Like I said, and um, it's really fun to unbox them. They kind of like it's all smushed in the box. Super funsies, um, and yeah, it's super fun. Ten to fifteen year warranty, depending on the model. And if you don't want to take our word for it, Helix has been awarded the number one mattress model picked by GQ and Wired magazine. It is even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. Helix is offering up to twenty percent off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com/relax. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. That's helixsleep.com slash relax. 
like I said, with Helix, better sleep starts now. Okay, Levy, can I tell you who I think needs to relax? Please, I'm, I would love to hear so much. It's me. Aww. I'm the problem. It's me. Yeah. I've been, That's Taylor Swift. I've been so desperate to do this podcast episode with you Yeah. since the day after we recorded the last one. You have so much to say? No, something happened. I lied. What? I am a huge hypocrite and I am the worst. Well, I completely lied. What'd you lie about? So- do you remember the last episode? You went to this whole spiel about like buying clothes on Instagram ads and like, you were like, don't you do this? Don't you get fashion ads on Instagram? And you like buy clothes on Instagram and like, not just on Instagram, like social media ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the next day or like shortly thereafter or something, I got a box of clothes that I had bought because of an Instagram ad. I know, you do it all the time, especially for the babies. You do it I all do, the time. I know, but I said that on the podcast. I was like, when we recorded, I was like, oh I yeah, I do this for exactly the babies. What you said. But it was clothes for me. And I, I know it. you buy clothes for you. I know that's I know, what I said. And then you're like, no, I don't. But I, I know, but, but I I'm totally the one who was like, like picks insane. them up at the end of the driveway and brings them up. I completely lied and was completely insane. I was like, I've never done that. What are you talking I about? I, I we, don't I do that. I don't know if we can play it back, but I'm pretty sure I called you a liar in real time. As you should, because like the next day I was like, wait a minute. What was it? I literally o opened a box of random stuff I'd bought from Instagram, Instagram ads. And like, I have a whole vlog titled like, clothes Buying I bought from Instagram ads. Well, like how are people week. supposed to trust anything you say on this they podcast? Shouldn't. They shouldn't. I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a liar. So anyway. Can we talk about your aesthetic right now? Because you're wearing a monochrome purple Listen, sweatshirt that is your own merch that says... California. I have been awake. Cal for and then you're wearing pants hours. that are also purple. And then also show your water bottle. Can you reach it? Yeah, it's like a lavender. It's the same pink. exact color as your sweatshirt. Mm, this is like a, a whole. Different. It's very matchy matchy. Like it's purple. a whole vibe. Well, no, I but I like it. I didn't it. know I was going to be judged at 10 at night with my husband. I thought you wouldn't and then care. This, and then you throw them with the socks. You just kind of. What's what? You got to switch what? it okay. up on them. I literally with the socks, you're like, I'm, I'm going. Turquoise? What are these socks? Are you are you blind? They're blue. First of all, not turquoise. Do you know what, well, color, do you know what turquoise looks like? I know. Yeah, but they're not blue. Blue. What's turquoise? They're not a. Tr they're not Explain like a true to blue. Me turquoise. I'm just, how many different kinds of blue are there? I'm turquoise just asking. It's like a rock. It's like a greenish rock with a greenish. Stuff yeah, it's like in a it. greenish. Yeah, this is a blue sock. Anyway, but it's not I did blue. not expect to come in Baby here having blue, you maybe? judging my outfit. Like I thought with my husband, I I'd said, be able "Can to, we talk about as a complimentary way to see, I, say honestly, that it's can working I just for tell you?" you I didn't even know I was wearing purple pants with a purple sweatshirt. When you said that, I looked down. I was like, oh, I guess so. I no, but didn't it's, even But it's just know. even because this is like a monochrome purple it wasn't sweatshirt. On purpose. And your water bottle I'm exactly purple matches pants, it. And I happen to have a purple water bottle. What's your favorite color? I'm purple. <gasps> Coincidence? But anyway, I didn't like plan it. I didn't care. Okay. So I wanted to say that. Seems like you tried real hard. And then is also, your phone case purple too? Probably. I don't know. Um, okay. Another thing. This doesn't necessarily have to relax. I wrote down a few things. Okay. Okay. This doesn't necessarily have to relax, but it's just like something I noticed over the weekend that I was like, huh, that's kind of weird. Okay. Have you ever noticed when you're in an airport, mm -hmm. they almost always talk about how like the flight's full or whatever. And like, okay, have, you're going to have to check your bags, your carry-ons, whatever. Every time. They've never said, hey, this flight's not too full. Don't worry about your bags. But you know what They've they never say? said that. They you say it every they time. Say? And, it, and it bugged me and it shouldn't. That every time I heard it, like for any gate, they go, we have a very very full flight today. But what does that mean? That it's always full. But like, isn't it just full? Like what's the difference between full, a full flight and a very, very, very full flight? Like what's the difference? A few empty seats versus like none? A full would mean full. Would mean there's no empty seats, would it not? Yeah, it seems like, like a definable number, statistic. Like full to me means like it's full. Like you can't fit anymore because it's full. Well, so like why would you say else. very, very full? Like is that more than regular full? Think about a cup. If you have like a full cup of water, but if you have a very full cup of water, maybe it might but spill. But humans are not, I mean, we are made of a lot of water, but like. Yeah, I think we're like 90 something percent you water. You are such a scientist. <laughs> it's my favorite thing I'm about wrong. you. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm, I'm calling you a scientist. No, but. Well, tell me, you can't have more than the amount of people on a plane. I mean, sometimes they overbook, but like, that's not what they mean by this. So why don't they just say we have a full flight? They never say it's a full flight today. They always go, it is a very, very extremely full flight. Can I play the other side? Of course. I think it's because um, people 
when they're traveling are a mess and they're probably very hard to deal with in mass. That's true. And mm-hmm. so if I worked for an airline at the gate or on the plane, I would be like, Oh my God, all these people are all going to be just such a mess and so demanding and just, just a total farting all the time. And it, there's nothing I can do about it. And they're all going to be kind of rude to me, uh, you know, and I'm just going to so try I'm gonna and say keep very it. full instead yeah, of full. So like like, that's their revenge. Well, because I feel like they have to say that because otherwise people aren't going to understand that. Yeah, like, I guess that's true. Yes. Those overheads towards the back, especially like you're, there's going to be nowhere to put your bag. So just check it. It's going to be easier for you. We're doing it for free at this point. Like, sorry, it's a little more inconvenient. You're going to have to wait for your bag. Like when we land, but like, as opposed to us being here for an extra half hour, because all you fart factories can't like can't like are trying to find space to put your bags because you all brought them on started, instead of like checking them when we are offering to do that for free at this point. So now I'm going to say we are very full emphasis. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. I'm not shading the people who work at airports and in I know you're not. No, because I, I, think I was just trying to that try to I, job sounds I not very too. fun because it sounds like you just deal with people Off, who are entitled terrible. and mean I mean, and rude I'm and sure farting all the great time. perks, too. But like, I'm just trying to like, I'm just offering the other side of that. But I have never heard anyone at a gate be like, hey, guys, what's up? It's like very chill today. There's going to be lots of room. You're all going to be able to fit your bags. Like, so don't stress about it. Like we got well, you. Well, no one would say that anyway, but like I've been on flights where they're not very, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I just noticed that. I was like, that's so interesting. That the they last say, flight I've been on that wasn't full, full was like 10 years ago. Like, okay. I have more. <laughs> good. I'm glad I have more too. Okay. So this is more like, uh, um, we already know this. I don't even know why I wrote this down, but like you already know this. Everyone already knows this, but I wrote it down. It was on because I was on the plane and they offered me a drink. I'm um, not like a drink. I mean, they did offer me a drink, but I didn't get a drink. I got a, a drink. Why are you um, saying a drink like that? Because like a drink is like alcohol. What is what? Is that how like they say it to you? Like what you would have gotten on a plane. What do you mean? What That sounded accusatory. No, it's just like they offer you like an alcoholic drink on the plane sometimes. Were you in first class? Yes. Oh, that's when they do. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It, well, you can buy one in the back. When you're in first class, like you board first and then they're immediately, sometimes immediately like, do you want a glass of champagne as the, as and the, it's like five in the morning. <laughs> yeah. As, as the peasants board around you. Peasants. Like, well, you know what I mean? Like, I, I wasn't in first class the last flight. I I've the literally show. been in first class like twice in my life. Like, <laughs> and never before, uh, they do make you feel like, TV. Less, they make you like walk past all the people in but first. Yeah. Well, so yeah. Weird. That was, I did for the wrong verbiage maybe, but like you, you're walking like all the, everybody else that's not in first has to walk on as you're like already in champagne and they know they can't order a drink or yeah. food or anything for like an hour and a half. You right. know what I mean? Like it's messed up. That's so annoying. I'm saying it's messed up. It I'm saying they shouldn't give you champagne. <laughs> well, they give you a drink at first class right when you board and then they're like, they take it away two seconds later. Right. Yeah. It's stupid because they're like, and then, all right, now <laughs> we're, we're rolling about to around. Take off. Yeah. Like, but anyway. Okay. So, so I you have ordered, to pound that I ordered a Coke because huh? I always do. Are we surprised? No. I ordered a Coke and a cola, a cola. And I, and I, they were about to bring it to me. I was like, oh, you can just bring it with, I've started to ask for people to bring it just with the meal because I don't want to drink it until I have my meal. Like, I don't like when like they bring my well, drink. We're not going to give you a meal immediately. I know. That's why I say don't bring the drink until the meal comes. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, do you want a pre-flight drink? And you said, no, Coke, not the pre-flight. No, 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 no. It was when they were taking orders for dinner. Okay. Got it. Um, but even at restaurants and I've started doing this. I don't know if you've noticed a couple of times we've been to restaurants. They'll ask me, what do you want to drink? And I'll tell them a Coke, but can I, can I wait till I have my food? Because I know I won't take a sip of it until I eat my food. And it's just sitting on the table and the ice is melting in it. And it's getting like, I, you totally know what's funny gross. is that I just noticed this last week when we went on a date night and I thought it was like, it was like so assertive and I've never seen you be assertive in any context. I don't want to waste the Coke. But like for, a, for like a, a warmy Coke, you're like, I'm going to be assertive for this. And it was kind of hot. Assertive. I wasn't rude. I was like, I just, I I was, I was nicely. Saying, no, I know you said it nicely, but I'm just like, like <laughs> usually like, that's oh, fine. Whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever you want. Like, no, it's okay. But with this, you're like, I would like my Coke delivered with the meal. And I did and, not and the say way it you, like that. You didn't say it like that, but it was, it was assertive. And it was I like, said, he said, what like would you, you like to drink? An opinion. And I said, I would like a Coke. Is there any way that I could get it when the meal comes out, please? Like I said it, like, is there any way, like if it's not too much trouble, like I said it like that, I did not say it all. Okay. Rude. Real housewife. Anyway, um, so I ordered a Coke, right? The Coke comes and I drink it after I eat my, like whatever meal they brought me. I don't even remember what it was. Oh, I think it was like a cheese and fruit plate or something like that. That's what they gave us for dinner. Anyway, I have my Coke, how I always have my Coke, which means I didn't have much of it. 
Yeah. So they come to take away the food and they take the food, but they wouldn't take the Coke away because they thought there's no way she's done drinking that because I took approximately two sips of it. Um, and so then they finally, and finally they came back. I was like, can you take this? They're like, you're done. I was like, yeah, I'm done. And they took the Coke away. Now, this is always so embarrassing for me because I feel like I am chugging my drinks, like whether it's a coffee or a Coke or water or whatever. And it always looks like I've never, I haven't taken a sip of it. Huh. Have you ever noticed this about me? You have noticed with coffees. Whenever you get me coffee, you think it's a full coffee that I don't drink it. Yeah. Anytime you've, which is not in the past couple of years, when you used to drink coffee, you would get coffee every day and then not drink it. Yeah. And take like two sips. Mm, and I would drink and, it. And I do also like pour out about six to nine Coca-Colas into the dish, uh, sink. From how, how many times, what are you saying? A day? A day. No, you do not pour out six to nine a Coke day. I everywhere. They're literally, the house is Coke lousy with them. a day. I have one with dinner. I don't have one the rest of the day. I really don't. As we've established, you I lie. Also, you openly lie and admit like, to lying on this podcast. Oh my God, shut up. You drink way more Cokes than that a day. And that you drink only not sips true. of them. And I have to dump out the cans in and my recycle defense, them In my constantly. defense, they're the mini can Cokes. They're not the big ones. They're the mini ones. I so you are admitting it. No. Wow, I, you folded under cross-examination no, I didn't, really what, I quickly. Mean, what? That you drink the mini Cokes and they're everywhere. I do drink the mini. I, I never denied drinking mini Cokes. three off the kitchen Cokes. counter right now. I, mean, I never denied drinking mini Cokes. Of course I but drink you said mini you only Cokes. have one a day? I have one with dinner at night, a can of Coke. I don't have a can of Coke the rest of the day. I really Where do you don't. get your Coke during the day? From whatever fast food place they order right, lunch from. Right, because there is more Cokes. Of course, but it's not a can of Anyway. The point you can't is, handle the truth. I need to relax, and my drinking abilities of beverages. I'm so bad. I, like, I, I just, I don't want to drink a drink. I want a sip. I want to f- taste it, and that's it. I like, I need it, but like, I desperately need it. Like, I can't eat half. Like, I cannot have fast food if I don't have a Coke. It is not an option. Like, if, it, I, if there's only water, I won't. I cannot eat it. But I have to have a Coke. But I only want like two sips of it. Can I What's relate? That. Can I relate on an airplane? I think it's wild that you, when they ask you if, what drink you want, uh, you know, Coke, what, ginger ale, typically I'll get in an airplane. So I'm like a little bit like, you know, nauseous from the motion. And then they fill up a cup with ginger ale and then they dump the oh, rest of no. the can. On. And I'm like, we're on this plane. It's moving around. Like, I don't feel good. And now I'm like stressed about this full glass of ginger ale and then the rest of the can. And also, I don't want to have to pee. Yeah. I desperately don't want to have to pee. So I'm not going to like chug this so that I'm not worried I about it I don't need spilling. the can. I've done, I do that now. Let now me. I, now I say, I don't want the can. Yeah. Cause like, why, why are you trying to make us pee so much on this airplane and spill stuff as this plane's moving around? Like, so yes, I feel like we're over hydrated or over fluided <clears> on planes <throat> yeah, for sure. So, sorry, I just, I, so I can relate. Well, I'll, no, it's, it's just that I, I hate my drinking habits. That like, I like, I desperately, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm craving this. So I need a vanilla latte. Like I have to have it. I'm going to die if I don't have an iced vanilla latte right now. And then I get it and I'm like, Oh my God, I take a sip. I'm like, this is amazing. Exactly what I wanted. But then once the sip is done, I had it. I don't want it anymore. What's that about? How do people just like sip on a drink all day? I don't get that. I think that's undiagnosed was, OCD. You know what I mean? What? You get fixated, OCD? You get fixated on a thing. and then you, you know gotta, what OCD you, is? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I don't think that's what OCD it's, it's is. It's like it's uh, an obsessive, no, it's, compulsive No, thought. it's not. Where you're like, I, I, for dopamine, I need this Coca-Cola right now. This will make me you're happy. You're explaining ADHD then, right oh, now. Oh, is that what I meant to say? <laughs> <laughs> and then you move on. I get bored with it immediately. I'm like, I have to have this. I need it. I hyperfixate on it. I have to have, I can't have anything else. I have to have it. And then I have it. And I'm like, oh, well, I had it because I, I'm I've never I'm seen satisfied. you do that anywhere else in life because I, I'm, I'm satisfied with it. So it's like, if I'm satisfied and I got to say, why would I keep drinking it? You know, like, why do you keep drinking it? Cause like you have a drink right there. Like, why do you keep drinking it? Like you already had a taste of it. Do you know what I mean? No. How broad can this go? Does this affect other aspects of your life? No, I'm talking about Coca-Cola. Specifically Coca-Cola. Yes. Not our marriage. What? (laughs) What are you saying? You've already had it. No, what? You're not a, you're not a drink after fast food. You're my husband. So you just need a sip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Because I got the taste. What about like your cookies? Do you just take a bite? Do you finish the whole cookie? 
Oh, see, that's a great point. That's a great argument. You just made me sound really stupid. That was good. I wasn't trying to debate you. No, I'm just saying that was a good point. Cause like, yeah, of course, if I taste the cookie, it's delicious. I want to keep eating it. So like like our marriage. So I make no, I literally make no sense. Like our marriage. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm trying to make, I'm I'm trying to mix metaphors here. (laughs) Some bad metaphors. So with Coca-Cola specifically. And water and coffee and any drink I ever get. Just any, any liquid. Yes. That you ingest. Mm -hmm. You just want a little bit. What about when you put in. I desperately want it. And then once I have it, I just want a sip of it. And then I'm like, wow, that it quenched my thirst. I'm done. Maybe your body is rejecting it because it knows it's like horribly bad for you. Water? Coca-Cola. But I do it with water. But you're carrying around this water jug. What's in there? Water? Water for like seven weeks. And that'll last like seven days. This is what I'm saying. you just fill it once a week. (laughs) Like a camel. (laughs) Anyway, I don't know how we started talking about that. That was really ridiculous. I went on. We've been talking for 60 minutes. We need to say thanks to our next sponsor. And then we'll tell, we'll do a truck of the day soon too. It's liquid. I, oh my God. Speak of the freaking devil. Liquid IV. There's something I want more than one sip of. Yeah. Me too. Well, me. Liquid IV. Ooh, guys. Festival season's coming up. I don't go to those, but I bet you do because everyone does except for me. I've been All to Coachella those, twice. Look at you, Coachella, man. And I'm- Coachella. Proud of I, it. People love these festivals. They get all these cute outfits, but I guess it's like you have to plan all the outfits. You have those, all this fun dancing and partying, but it's like super hot. Like you gotta stay hydrated, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Especially at those ones. Cause oh, yeah. it's so dry and hot. Are you kidding? It's festival season. And you got to plan faster and be more efficient with your hydration. Bring liquid it's IV essential. with you. Yes. Liquid IV's got you covered with the prep before. Power through to the headliner and recover after the weekend. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone and three times the electrolytes of traditional Do they mean the weekend portion. the singer or like because like you've been there no, for the like weekend? No, you've been there for the weekend. Oh, okay. I don't know if the weekend's going to be there. I don't know if he's going to be there either. Anyway, we love Liquid IV. We talk about them all the time. We love them. It's fabulous. They've got this convenient packaging. They're delicious. And also they make you super popular. All of our friends try to steal our Liquid IV every day. They're like, we are popular because we have Liquid IV in our house. I'm not kidding. I just, I bought Girl Scout cookies last week with Liquid IV. I paid them in Liquid IV. (laughs) Wait, I believe you actually. Yeah. But that's that's because it's worth more than... Than well, that's money, certainly your line. Than the U.S. Like, dollar. It, I'm, I am lying, but like but, it is worth more than the U.S. dollar. Anyway, um, that is Eric's opinion, not a fact. But th- just because I allegedly. feel like, I don't know, allegedly. Is there some sort of legal? I don't know what lease? there is. Are we going to be sued by I the Girl Scouts? I don't know, Liquid IV might be like, um, excuse me, we do not, we are, we are not saying that we're worth more than the American dollar. That was Eric saying that, not me. Allegedly. Allegedly. Anyway, who, okay, moving on. Our favorite flavors, um, we, we've been loving. Of course, we always love passion fruit. Pina colada, super fun. Strawberry lemonade, delicious. I'm, I'm a fan of the grape. There's so many good ones. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. There's 12 delicious, refreshing flavors to keep your hydration routine exciting. Contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. Three times the electrolytes of a traditional sports drink made with premium ingredients, non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code RELAX at checkout. Um, By the way, Liquid IV has donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Isn't that amazing? By the way, they sent a bunch of it to us and they sent it to (laughs) us. To our old house. Oh, we got to go get it. I know. Our neighbors are so hydrated, right? Our, okay, we got to go get Not it. neighbors, our, the new owners. So yeah, you guys should definitely check it out. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code RELAX at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code RELAX at liquidiv.com. Okay, guys, it's that time. Finally. Sorry I talked so long about something as stupid as like my bad Coca-Cola drinking habits. When we could have been listening to Truck of the Day. Oh, yes. Flynn desperately wanted to do a Truck of the Day today. So here is Flynn's Truck of the Day. Flynn's Truck of the Day. Oh, Truck of the Day. Truck of the Day. Flynn's Truck of the Day. Flynn's Truck of the Day. Truck, truck, truck of the Day. Does my voice sound weird? Yeah. What does it kind of sound? Scratchy. Sounds scratchy. All right, dude. What's the truck of the day today? A flatbed truck. Oh, nice. 
What kind of flatbed truck? One that carries a um a, a front and loader. I think that is so cool. A yeah. front and loader. Now, what is a front and loader do? It picks up dirt. Like lots of dirt or just a little bit of dirt? Um, lots of dirt. Really? Here, why don't you show it? I'll hold your mic for you and you can show it off. This is my flatbed truck. That's right. It's beautiful. Yep, it carries a front and loader. I know. It's so cool. And look it. That's pretty cool. How many wheels does it have? 22. 22 wheels? Yeah. That's the most wheels I've ever heard of on a truck before. Have you ever had a truck with 22 wheels? No. This is the first one? Yep. Now, why is it called a flatbed truck? Is it because it's full of beds? No, flatbed, but it doesn't have a winch. It doesn't have a winch? Mm-mm. Hmm. Okay. Do most yep. trucks have winches? Some of them. What's a winch? A winch is like a tow hook. Oh, like a hook, like a wrench. A winch wrench. Yeah. Got it. And it does. This one doesn't have a wrench, though. No. All right. Well, that's a pretty great truck of the day, dude. I show you my next one. Oh, we got two trucks of the day. Yeah. Holy smokes! It's a lucky day, folks. Two trucks of the day in one day. My goodness gracious. All right, what's this next one, Mr. Flynn Stocklin? A front end loader. Front end loader. A front end loader. And what color is this truck? Yellow. Yellow. And how many wheels does this one have? Four. Four. So not as many as the last one. Mm -mm. Now, this one's the one that picks up the dirt, right? Yeah. Does it have any special things on it that you want to talk about? Mm-hmm. This black piece is called the bucket. And that's the part that does what? Picks up the dirt. Mm-hmm. And what other parts are there of that truck? Right here is a hydraulic, and right here is a hydraulic. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. I never knew, Flynn, before I met you, I never knew what a hydraulic was. And when it twists like that, what is that because of? Oh, um, inspendable. Inspendable? Mm-hmm. That's amazing, Flynn. I love this truck. Black Hi. wheels. Flynn decided he wanted to do a truck of the day. So we're Are you trying to take my job? No. Flynn's trying to take Eric's job here. Are you trying to take my job? Yeah, yeah. he's taking his ah! job. We're doing a truck of the day. Okay. Right, Flynn? What truck is it? Flint and Loader. Oh, my favorite. Okay. Next one, hydraulic cover. Oh, hydraulic cover. So hydraulic not only does it piston. have... Piston. Piston? What's a hydraulic piston? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, that's pretty cool. Uh, so the, it's not only does this truck have hydraulics, but it also has hydraulic covers and hydraulic pistons. Hydraulic covers, but no hydraulic pistons. No hydraulic pistons. Oh, disappointing. Flynn. What? If you could be a truck, what kind of truck would you be? I would want to be a grapple truck. Why? Because they're cool. What does a grapple truck do? Pick up junk. Picks up junk? Dumps it in the bin. Ooh, so it's kind of like a garbage truck? Yeah. I don't know that I've ever even seen a grapple truck. What color is it? Yellow. Oh, so you'd want to be a grapple truck? Do you know what I'd want to be? What? I don't want to be a road zipper. A road zipper, me too. Those look kind of fun. They do. Are you all done with truck of the day or do you got more to talk about? Got more to talk about, but next one. Okay, what's the next one going to be, bro? All right, what's the next truck of the day, bro? A taxi. A taxi? What's a taxi do? Picks up people and put them to different places. That's right. Have you ever been in a taxi? No. Now, if you were to go in a taxi, where would you tell them to take you? The grandma house. The grandma's house. Where else? Airport. To the airport because you want to fly on an airplane? Uh -huh. That'd be fun, huh? We're going to go on an airplane together very soon. That's going to be kind of fun. Flynn's going to come with us to the shows in Colorado and New Mexico. And doors open. Yep, doors open. More importantly. Wheels spin. Wheels spin. Very important. That's important for a car to work. Back doesn't open. Uh-oh. 
Hood doesn't open. Did you open. just toot? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hood doesn't open. The hood doesn't open. Uh oh. Doors open. The doors open. This is a very important deciding. That door doesn't open. It doesn't. No. It's a big deciding factor for Flynn when picking out trucks if the doors open. Okay, next. Another one? Okay, one more. All right, now what do you have, Flynn? A book. A book? I thought this was truck of the day. No, this is a catalog. Oh, it's a catalog? So is it catalog of the day? Yeah. <laughs> Flynn has a tiny little catalog of um, trucks, toy trucks that he loves. It's like his favorite thing in the whole world. Here's wow. first one. Okay. First one that I like is this one. What is that? It's a flatbed truck. Nice. I don't know how much dollars it is. I don't know how much dollars it is either. Okay. On to the next page. Okay. <laughs> okay. Extraction vehicles again. Okay. Okay. This is mm -hmm. a front and loader and I want it. You want it? <laughs> and I want that one too. Is that a front and loader as well? No, that's a bulldozer, that's a front and loader similar. Yeah, I have a hard time telling those apart. A flatbed truck that had the back Oh, Whoa, cool. It's the same. Look at it. Oh, nice. Bye bye. An abrupt ending from Mr. Flynn. He had to go to the potty. So so thank you for listening to Flynn's Truck of the Day slash Flynn's Catalog of the Day. Flynn's Truck of the Day. <laughs> How fabulous is that kid? He's just the best. He's the absolute best person I've ever known. Are you so well, what about your other kids? What about me? Well, yeah, I mean, on uh, tied. You're all tied. He's there, yeah. They're but, uh, you know, some great kids. Things like that. Everything he says, uh, he makes me laugh like harder. I know he's so than funny. Than anyone, no offense. He's so funny. He's so great. I love him so I much. Cackle. Every day I I cackle. Yeah. I belly laugh. Yeah, he's very funny. Constantly. He's the best. Well, I don't know how many more of those we'll get in the future. I, people keep saying trucks will be a phase for him, but like he is not, that ain't no phase. He knows everything about trucks and he loves trucks is all he wants to talk about. I learned things. He said the word reticulating the other day. About I know. It, and I was like, what's, Today, what is, he said, what was he say? What did he say in the truck of the day? He said some word I'd never heard. I, I wasn't here. I don't know. You were, you came in and you oh, was. Oh, that in the part where. Oh, he was, he was talking, talking about, about his, the hydraulic piston or something? Yeah, something like that. I was like, what are you talking about? Anyway, he's great. And you guys, we have a lot more fun stuff in this episode that we can't wait to get to. But first, we want to say thanks to our next sponsor. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're, you know, we're always growing. We're always changing. We're always trying uh, to be better. Therapy uh, can be about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. And this is something that has helped me greatly as my life has grown and changed um, from being a kind of self-obsessed actor idiot into being a parent of three and, and, and trying to uh, just, and, and trying and wanting, I should say, to be a, a better person and the best person I can be for myself and uh, my family. And you learn a lot of tools in therapy and you learn a lot of things about yourself. And I think, um, I think it's great. If you are thinking of starting therapy, I would suggest that you give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist uh, and switch therapists anytime, you know, if you want to for any additional charge, if it's not a good fit. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash relax with me to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash relax with me. Okay, guys, we have really bad news. Um, sorry, but uh, somehow that we just recorded an entire segment and it didn't record. <clears throat> so I'm really sad because it was fun. We were I'm chatting. sorry. But the reason I'm sad is because my voice is so close to just being completely gone and it's painful. So like you might have to just take over, Lovey, and I'll just look at you lovingly. Okay. Because so let's hear what you got to say. I had another thing I wrote down. <coughs> oh, okay, what is it? That, that needs to relax, I think. And it's just, it's kind of broad. Okay. But the idea of technology. Yeah, that is broad. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. I saw a commercial for a car 
um, that is a bunch of people like tapping their knees and clapping and tapping their knees and clapping. And then it gets to the end of the commercial and it's like, we got the best new driverless car on the market. And I was like, are there more, if we're doing more driverless cars, like we got at, is our, are all car companies now trying to have driverless cars? Are people not driving anymore? Are we not driving cars? And I just feel like we're in these, um, <coughs> big metal machines that go fast and that we, you know, and we were tested and we were permitted and then tested, you know, both in like a written test, you know, question and answer test, and then a physical driving test. Like we should be operating these motor vehicles. Like we shouldn't, right? I right? think so. I don't know. Um, and, and, and so it, it made me nervous because like everyone I see on the road now is either, uh, you know, 80% of them, I feel like are, are texting while they're driving. Cause I see people like they're looking down and then they're looking up. I feel like, you know, I'm watching, I'm watching you. I'm looking around. You know what I mean? I make eye contact with people and, uh, I just, I worry that there are driverless cars. I don't feel safe about that. I don't, it's not something that I, I want. I feel, you know, <coughs> I feel like we should be driving cars. Yeah. I not, agree. not that cars should be driving themselves. Yeah. I Cause would, they're, I don't understand it. Maybe it's just that I'm, uh, old and scared and, a. I'm not a, what am I, a, a, a geriatric millennial? What What am I? I? Are you Gen X? No. What's Gen X? What's millennial? I don't know. I'm me. I'm, I think you might what be. What are you? I'm a millennial. I don't really know what I am. Let's look it up. What years are millennials? Okay, let me well, look Well, let's. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, but we also, I mean, we also have a toilet. Um, you know, th there's one particular toilet in this house that was here when we bought it and it functioned on its own. It's like we walk in and it lifts the seat and then you sit down and then it, like you hit a button and it'll shoot water at parts and you hit another button and it'll blow hot air at parts. And I'm like, this is too much. Like you're a toilet. Like you had your, I feel like, you know, the inventors of this object had kind of thought it out and we got to a good place and now we're just overthinking it. And, it, you know, this could cost lives i'm not particularly on the toilet but more so in cars like it scares me i'm makes me nervous what am i a millennial but barely i'm a millennial but so i'm a geriatric yeah millennial <coughs> oh, i feel like that's an embarrassing thing to be i'm really well, sorry I'm guys i'm really it. sorry Fine. that i keep coughing in the microphone i'm so sorry i feel bad about that i know it's like so obnoxious to listen to i feel terrible yeah anyway uh, no you're fine Everybody loves you. Like literally everyone loves you. That is I love you. Definitely not true. But you love look at me. the internet. Everyone loves you. <laughs> um uh well I will say that you love me and my kids love me and that makes me very happy. That's very true. They're great, those kids. I like them a lot. Our kids? Yeah. I think they're the best. They're just wonderful. Of kids, you know? They're so funny these days. The I love funniest. when Wesley gets in his really talkative moods. Yeah. And he's just like, what? he's loud when he's talkative. He, he's yeah. so loud. Yeah. And he's got like those six words that he, he has, really loves. Are you kidding? He has a billion words. Six. Well, I mean, he has his six like go to words. And so when you can tell he really wants to talk, he's like, I got these six words. And so he just re on repeat, just say the six words over and over <laughs> again. Like. I think. And then he's, he's like, right, guys. Am I right? He's super advanced because he doesn't just say the words. He says, it's a. Uh, he goes, it's an apple. Yeah, he understands. It's a car. Like he says a sentence. Like that's yeah. crazy. Right. So <coughs> yeah, sure. He has like his faves. You say his faves. I keep coughing. Uh, his favorite words are apple. <coughs> Water. Yep. Uh-oh. Yep. All done. No, he says onion. On onion, like Arrested Development, that character. Yeah. Yes, Korean. Hello. Yeah. Onion. Onion. But that's what he, he thinks is he's saying is all done. Mm -hmm. Up. He doesn't say up that much, but yeah, he, I guess he does, say, he does like the word up. But he kind of acts like, he kind of acts like he's like, um, like Jerry Seinfeld, like doing a comedy routine. He's like, it's a ball. It's a, it's a water. It's a ball. Like, you know it's what I mean? Apple. It's like, it's, and a it's an apple. So it's he'll a just, car. He loves car. He, he'll be like, yeah, it's a car. So like, he like, he knows it's a, <laughs> and he knows these six words. He knows a lot and more words than that. When he's getting attention, he'll like say all these words, but like, over as if over, it's over, like a over, routine. Over, over, yeah. Over, over. It's really great. In the I mornings, love it. In the mornings, I love, he wakes me up by going, he'll, he'll stand up in his little crib in my room and he'll look around on the ground and he'll say what he sees, but he goes, 
Uh-oh, it's a car. Uh-oh, a car. Uh-oh, a paw. Uh-oh, 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 a paw. Uh-oh, 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 a paw. Uh-oh, a car. Uh-oh, uh-oh, a book. Uh-oh. He just starts like screaming, uh-oh, and says everything he sees in the room. Yeah. He says Elmo a lot, and that's the cutest thing I've ever heard in my freaking life. Oh, yeah, he says Elmo. He says Elmo a lot. Today, yeah, he does, he does he more than six words in his eight. Today, I showed him a, a cow, stuffed animal. He said, moo, a he cow. He has a lot of words. I showed yeah, I him a pig. He goes, I was a pig. Being, I showed him I was being a, a duck. Butt, he said, a duck. Quack, quack. And his quack is spectacular. I don't know. Yeah, his quack is great. Oh his my quack God. is like. Uh, his quack is incredible. He screams it. He like growls. He's like. It's like a method quack. Like, like I can't do it because I'm so sick. But like he's like. Well, you just did it's it. It's the yeah. craziest sound. It's so funny. And he, but he like, he has a lot of words, but he does have favorites. Yeah. And he looks, he looks to you for, I love that he like searches when he's happy about something, he like searches for you for like a shared experience. Oh yeah. If someone new walks in the room, he has to show them everything in the room. Yeah. So he's like a, I love that. He's like a communal, was like, that. like shared energy person. He like wants, he's like an inclusive. Totally. And I, I feel like it's a really good sign how inclusive he is. And I, I, I love that about him as I get to know him. Yeah. Flynn was like that for sure. And <coughs> Maisie's not like that, but Maisie, She's a talker and she knows a lot of words. She surprises me every day. It's not like with, with Wesley, I feel like both of the boys, it would be like, oh, we'd show them a ball and be like, a ball, a ball, a ball. And eventually they'd go, oh, a ball, you know, or whatever. You talk with them about something and then they'd yeah, say, but Macy's Macy surprising. would just like surprise you. Today, she picked up a thing of Play Doh and she goes, Play Doh. I was like, how? You've never played with Play Doh. Yeah. Because I don't let her, obviously, because I'm like, would she eat it? You know, I don't let her play with Play Doh. But she picked a Play-Doh and she knew what it was. And she said Play-Doh to me. Yeah. I was like, how do you know this word? Because right. I was with Maisie all the time. Right. Maisie all the time. But the other night I went out and she looked up at the moon. She goes, the moon. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding? She's super, she's a sponge, that kid. Very she's, perceptive. Yeah, she really is. And so joyful. Just, yeah. Yeah. So happy. And she knows so many things. Yeah. Wesley does too. They're just different in how they express all the things. They, they both are very, very articulate. They, they, they both know a bajillion words. Yeah. And they're very close to walking. It's terrifying. Right. Um, yeah. But, Maisie the other day to me, she was like, did you hear about the Trump indictment? And I was like, literally, I think she, that's what she's saying. Sometimes. How did she know about the Trump indictment? <laughs> sometimes You're Maisie. You're one. But yeah. Maisie talks to me sometimes and I feel like that's what she's doing. She's like, she's like, you know what I mean? Like, that's how she's yeah. talking. Like, Whereas the boys have always felt like they were like frustrated. They couldn't get the words out. Maisie's like, no, I'm saying it right. Right. You just aren't hearing she's, it. She's yeah. She's like, they, they're like frustrated that like, we don't understand them to where she's like, you guys are idiots that you don't. And she's like, you're missing out. Like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we're going to say thanks to our next sponsor. Let's do it. Um, <clears throat> which is the wonderful. You need. Indeed. If you are trying to hire, think about someone who has changed your life for the better. How incredible would it be if your company could find more of those life-changing people right now when you needed them? If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you, where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for a candidate with the right skills when you can do it all right here on Indeed. Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Do you hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employees find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job's description the moment they sponsor a job. Something that I love about Indeed uh, is, is that Instant Match feature. You know, you're not kind of sifting through all these things, you you log on, you you put a post for a person that you're looking to employ and they they instantly have very good quality candidates that, uh, you know, like they said, will change your life maybe. Uh, Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash relax to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash relax. Indeed.com slash relax. You need to hire? You need? Indeed. Uh, love you. We haven't talked at all about my weekend and, and everything that happened on tour. Tell me some stories. Okay. There are so many things I could tell you. I'm sure. Um, but one of the things I want, well, first of all, the one thing I just remembered because I saw a video of it. 
is, you know, when I do like, there's part of the show where I have like a shirt that has like a fake butt attached to it. Uh -huh. I like, you know, dance around with like this butt thing on the back of my shirt, whatever. Uh huh. Well, that's like a quick change moment. And I, I ran to put on the quick change. I put it on and I start to run out on stage and realize the butt is in the front. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what do what is I it? do? Because basically it's like, it's like, it's, the, it's like a plastic fake well, what's looking the song? dumb butt. It's, it's WAP. Like, so I like pretend yes, to like fake wop, twerking, TikTok whopping dance. things. So it's like a TikTok dance medley. So there's a bunch of other songs prior right. and that's like a reveal. And then you turn around. So it's like, to, I, it's I do a, a bunch of TikTok you have dances this plastic and stuff. Butt on. Yeah. And then I like in the middle of the song, like turn around to reveal that I've been wearing this plastic butt the whole time. So I walk on stage and realize it's There's on the, the front. The butt's in the front. And I was like, what do I do? So I like- How have you not told me this yet? I haven't told you anything. This isn't even the best story of the weekend. But I like, I dig my elbow and I like push it behind my back as I'm walking on stage. So I have like a T-Rex arm. Okay. Because like my elbow is holding the butt on sure. the back. Which was the first thing I thought of. It shows and then, dexterity. That's and good. And so then I got a T-Rex arm and I'm doing the dance. And I was like, I don't know that they'll notice. But then I was like, wait, what's my plan here? Because I can't like turn around and reveal the butt on my back because it's on my side under my elbow. Oh my so like God. I have to reveal the butt on my stomach. Like I didn't know what to do. So I just yeah. like, I do the I dances know. like with a T-Rex arm on one side, like trying to hold the butt. How many dances is it before the butt is revealed? Like how many like moments? Four things. My God. It's quick though. You know, Miranda, it's like yeah. three seconds of yeah. 10 seconds, five seconds, 20 seconds, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, so it gets to the butt part and I turn around cause I was like, turn around to twerk or whatever. And I was like, this is not f funny. There's like no joke to this. Cause it's right. like, Miranda doesn't really twerk. And so it's just like my back's audience. And I was like, okay. So I turned back around to show them the front and no one laughs. Cause they're like, what is that on her stomach? It's like a butt pregnancy. Like, what is it? And I just kind of point to it and my broke character just kind of like smile. I'm like, I don't know. Just, kind of, just kind of shrugged. No one laughed. No one knew what was going on. And I just took it off. I was like, Oh my God, it was such a fail. That's so funny. So bad. But anyway, I'm so sad. I missed that. I it was, that was just the only thing I can remember right now. Cause I just saw a video of it, but, um, I love hearing stories about your tour, like like when it goes really great, like it makes me so happy. But when you say something <laughs> went horribly, hysterically wrong, I'm so sad that I missed it. That was pretty bad. But there's there was a lot of great stuff that I just don't even remember any of it now. But like the shows were really fun, even though like, I mean, the the worst part was that I've lost my voice. So in Memphis, yeah. I did Popra. And I, I don't even know that I told you this yet, but like I sing the end of the show, I sing Popra. The very last note is like, like a very an, high note. It's like note. an operatic yeah, very, version of a bunch of pop songs. Very pop high final soprano note that I like sing out. And I, my voice was feeling very hoarse and tired that day. But like, I've never not been able to sing a note. I've, I've sounded bad because like my voice was hoarse. But like, and I kind of didn't sound my best. You know, it was not very great. But then I get to that moment. I was like, I just got to push through. So I get to the <clears throat> watermelon sugar, that part. Oh my God, did you hear about that? Mm -hmm. And then I go to sing the high note. Uh, uh -huh. I get up high to the high note and I hit it. And then immediately my voice was like, no, thank you. So I like, I hit it, but it was like, oh, it like just croaked. And I like kind of was like, shook it off. I was like, that was kind of weird. So I take a deep breath to do the final like note. Uh, yeah. Nothing. Nothing not, comes out. Not a sound. Not even a croak. <laughs> that not, must be so weird as an audience member. I'm sure they were so forgiving and understanding, so though. <laughs> and so I just started. I was like, "Well, this this is the final moment of the show. This is like hit the final note. Lights. Everyone's like clapping and screaming, and I'm like, oh, thank you so much for coming to the show.' Bow, run off the stage. And this is a final moment. And you're just giving them mime. And I you're didn't just miming. Say, nothing came out. Yeah. So like the song ends, and they're not screaming and clapping because they're like what just happened yeah and i'm like what do i do i can't walk just walk off the stage so i just i was just laughing and i was like nothing came out and i was like that <laughs> did you that. say that yeah, i was like that was so weird i was like wait i was so can i try i have to try that again hold on i could do it and i go and i see acapella watermelon sugar you oh. did and i try to do it you go to the scene i know nothing so then i'm laughing and i'm like oh my god I was like i literally can't what's going on 
It's like, I can't sing. And the audience is laughing, but they're also like, has she gone insane? Like, what is she doing? Yeah. Also, is she like, okay? It's like, this is so weird. I was like, this is so awkward. This is supposed to be like the big final moment and I can't do it. I was like, can you guys do me a favor? Everyone pull out your phones and film this for me. And then when I don't hit the high note, can you scream like I did so that people <laughs> see it online and they're very confused? And they did. They all played along. Like everyone's phones went up and I haven't seen so a video three of it. Times? Yeah. I didn't do the whole pop or just the just last section. Yeah. Um, nothing came out. And they all filmed it and like they cheered and like I just laughed. It was like a good night. But then I felt so bad that like I ended the show so terribly. I was like, I can't end the it show like this. It sounds like a one of a kind experience. It I know, doesn't I felt sound so, terrible. I was like, I cannot end the show like this. This is so embarrassing. So I was like, I, <clears throat> I know there must be a song that I can sing. So I got my ukulele out and I sang the song about Flynn's emotions, you know, uh -huh. because that one's a little lower in my register and I was able to croak it out. But you, you but it's in the show. So you must have cut no, it. No, I, I cut that months ago from the show. And oh, okay. So I, I knew I had it on my computer and that I could play it. So uh -huh. I was like, okay, let's do this. So that's how I ended the show. And the audience was very forgiving. Um, but anyway, that was, that's wild. A nightmare. And just on the fly, you found it on the computer and no, I had to go backstage. So the girl that I brought up for, um, earlier in the show to like during the woman medley, the yeah. little girl, there's a sweet little girl, probably like, did you bring her back on stage? Yeah. I was like, I have to go backstage to find the song. So, um, where are you? Come on stage. I like called her up. I was like, here, entertain the audience. I'll be right back. I'm so sad I missed this. And I don't even know what she did because I was frantically trying to find yeah. this stuff on stage. But I know it was silent when I came out. So like, <laughs> I don't know if she didn't say anything, but um, yeah, that happened. But what I wanted to say <clears throat> is this was the most important thing to me of everything that happened this weekend. So on tour, I only eat cold, soggy food. Like, and mm. happily, because like, I love tour. I don't care. But it's like, you're doing a sound check whenever they, you know, I get lunch delivered or whatever, like I order lunch or whatever. And it sits kind of in my dressing room because there's problems that go awry, whatever. And so then when you finally get your food, it's been sitting there for an hour. And the same thing after the shows, like we will order dinner and it'll be in the dressing room. But then like, you know, it's been there for an hour or two. So it's always kind of cold and soggy, whatever, which is fine. Don't care. It's it fine. is what it is. Yeah, that's I part can tell of you're life. not mad about it at all. Yeah. No, it's just like part of tour. Like, as you know, like yeah, you when you tour, it's it. just kind of everyone on tour talks about like when you tour, you're just used to eating cold food. Like it's just kind yeah. of how it is. It's kind of like just being a parent. Anyway, um, there was one meal I got that was warm and lovey. What was it? It was amazing. Across the street from our venue was like a diner, like a Southern diner. And I ordered a few things from there. But the most important thing I ordered was buttermilk biscuits and gravy with homemade mm. jam. When I tell you Wait, it's the jam on biscuits with gravy. Love. I know. What? Makes no sense. Biscuits and gravy. Sure. But yeah. Or biscuits and jam. Sure. I know. I know. Together. I'm telling you what kind of jam I am telling you. It was the best thing I've eaten in 2023 so far and probably 2022. Whoa. It was answer my question. What kind of jam? Apricot, it was a homemade raspberry? strawberry i think either strawberry or raspberry it was seedy but it was homemade for sure homemade because they sell it they sold it in jars at this diner they were like oh, you have our homemade jam you can buy it for three hundred dollars a jar so it was like a famous jam but the biscuits were like the $300 most hundred dollars a jar i'm joking i'm saying like they were okay, very expensive sorry. the most perfectly cooked southern buttermilk biscuits holy smokes and they were hot like they had just cooked those mother truckers and then piping hot delicious goopy thick gravy oh my god and then with i'm telling you i had a wonderful weekend performing and i love performing and i love meeting everyone who comes to shows but that's all you care about no that's not all i care about but it was the best part of my weekend was that one where'd you eat it i mean i'm not being you serious backstage? i was backstage in my dressing room by myself just like eating freaking out biscuits with gravy and jam on and them. i don't know what, i don't know what to tell you love it's how they served it there i think it's because it was the only thing warm you had no, it was amazing. Okay. Well, we'll have to go there. Where was it? Memphis? It was in Nashville. Nashville. Okay. It was incredible. Can we make it at home? I literally bought biscuits and gravy tonight. I saw that. From the grocery oh, store. I, because I, I was like, that. I need to eat this again. You know what? I bought raspberry jam last night. Well, we're going to go and eat that. And we're going to leave you with Flynn's second truck of the day that he insisted what? on doing. Yes. There's more? So we're ending the episode with Flynn's second truck truck slash snack of the day enjoy guys thanks for listening bye Clint's truck of the day. <laughs> all right we're back with another truck uh -oh. snack, day. snack day snack 
fact. Snack of the day? Yeah. I thought we were doing <laughs> I thought we were doing another trick of the day. I wanted to do a snack of the day. Okay. I guess we're doing a snack of the day. Um Flynn ran in here to me and said he wanted to do another truck of the day. And then I guess he just changed his mind. And now he wants to do a snack of the day. But he was gonna do a skid steer. Um, but I guess that idea is now out the window because he suddenly decided he'd rather have a snack of the day. So, which I'm not opposed to. A snack sounds wonderful right now. So hopefully we get that snack here in a moment and um, can continue on with snack slash truck slash catalog of the day. It looks like was, Flynn has come back. It's, it, I was going to be tree brush, but instead it was Gushers. Gushers? I didn't even know we had Gushers at our house. <laughs> I used to eat Gushers when I was a little girl. You like Gushers? Yeah. All right. So that's the snack of the day. Yeah. Now, in case someone doesn't know what a gusher is, can you explain what a gusher is? Yeah. What is it? It's why it has juice in it. Mm hmm. And then we eat it and swallow the whole thing. <laughs> is it crunchy or chewy? Chewy. Is it sweet or spicy? Sweet. Is it like candy or is it like healthy food? Candy. Candy, yeah, it's yummy, huh? This is a blue gusher. All right, taste it. Tell me how it is, buddy. Good. Can I have one? What color? I can... need one. Okay, what color? Red. Oh, thank you. Can I have it? Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, baby. That is delicious. Now, what truck did you want to do? A uh, skid steer. What kind of skid steer, though? A forklift skid steer? A um, dump truck skid steer? Can't know I have a dump truck skid steer. Oh, silly mama. <laughs> what kind of skid steer is it? A street sweeper. And what does a street sweeper skid steer do? Street to sweep. It streets the sweep, y'all. It streets the sweep. A double. You got a double gusher? Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. Red and orange gushers stuck together. A double gusher. Yep, a double gusher. Doing... Two eating at the same time is tricky. It is kind of tricky. <laughs> Thanks for watching Snack of the Day. Right? And Trick of the Day. And Trick of the Day. Uh, this segment is... Trash of the Day. Oh, and now we have Trash of the Day. <laughs> the Gusher Packet is now the Trash of the Day. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.